Join us on a winter journey across a remote section of Union Pacific's overland route through eastern Idaho and western Wyoming. Between Pocatello and Granger lies 200 lonely miles of railroad track originally spiked down by the Oregon Short Line in an effort to reach the Pacific Northwest. And it has done just that for the past 140 years. Our wintertime visit to the Pocatello subdivision will begin at its namesake town and head railroad east to McCammon, where UP's Ogden sub continues south to Utah. The main line follows the Portneuf River through the mountains passing Lava Hot Springs and Pebble, then through the Gem Valley to Bancroft and on to Soda Springs. We will spend some time at Montpelier before continuing east into Wyoming, ending our winter journey at the junction with Union Pacific's Omaha to Ogden Main Line at Granger, 30 miles west of the crew change point and yard at Green River. We arrived in Pocatello in mid-January along with a blast of Arctic air. Nothing unusual for this town in southeastern Idaho that is dubbed the Gateway to the Northwest. The elevation is 4,462 feet above sea level and the lowest recorded temperature was negative 33 degrees Fahrenheit set back in February of 1985. This morning it is a considerably more comfortable zero as we stand outside the old Greyhound bus depot and yard office for Union Pacific. The Art Deco style bus depot dates back to 1946 and is one of only a few that still exist in the country. It was built by Union Pacific Stages. The Oregon Short Line Passenger Depot opened in 1915 and U.S. President William Howard Taft attended its dedication ceremony in August of that year. It served passengers until Amtrak's Pioneer was discontinued in 1997. Pocatello has always been a railroad town. The building of the Oregon Short Line brought about its incorporation into a city in 1893. Union Pacific's massive yard is only a shadow of what it once was. The railroad's first hump yard was opened right here in 1947 and rail traffic boomed. The hump operated until March 1st, 2002. Trains are still flat switched in Pocatello, but not on the scale of the yard's glory days. While on the subject of nostalgia, three examples of this railroad's past are on display at Ross Park near the east end of the yard. The OSL 2005 is a Baldwin 282 built in April of 1911 for the Oregon Short Line. Next to it rests a wooden caboose built in 1923 as UP 25784. It was retired in 1969 and donated to the Pocatello Area Chamber of Commerce where it eventually ended up here, painted as the OSL number 5784. And last but not least, EMD DDA-40X Centennial No. 6901, built in June of 1969. This was the most powerful diesel-electric locomotive ever built on a single frame. Twin 16-cylinder 645 diesel engines produced an impressive 6,600 horsepower. The 6901 was one of 47 built exclusively for UP. Most of the Centennials were retired between 1984 and 1986. Well, that's enough history. Let's get to the trains. East of Pocatello is the small town of McCammon, where we find a junction with UP's Ogden Sub near milepost 189.7. The line departs Pocatello as a double-track main, but goes to a short section of single track at the east switch. UP 5341 is westbound, most likely for Brooklyn Yard in Portland, Oregon with a long train consisting of domestic stacks and a sprinkling of UPS trailers and FedEx containers.
Not long after the cloud of snow settles, an eastbound is upon us behind UP 8046. Unlike the westbound, which consisted mostly of 53-foot domestic stacks, this train is entirely made up of 40-foot marine containers. The train continues east on the Pocatello subdivision and we will catch up to it again as we follow the railroad into the mountains along the Portneuf River. Our next stop is near the small town of Lava Hot Springs. As you can guess, it is known for numerous hot springs located right in town. A clear block on signal 1803 for Main 2 tells us we have a westbound. UP-3034 leads a unit train of sulfuric acid toward Pocatello. Idler cars have been placed between the locomotives and hazmat tank cars. UP-8198 is westbound near Blazer with a soda ash train out of Green River.
Blazer is control point G177. As it is located at milepost 177 on the Pocatello subdivision. At this point, the railroad transitions to a single track mainline with sidings for the next 57 miles to Pescadero. At Simmons Road near milepost 175.5, a few horses hunker down with their backs to the wind and snow, while UP 8046 is again seen heading eastbound with its train of international containers. We continue our eastbound journey as the railroad follows old Highway 30 past an old siding known as Pebble. The ramshackle Pebble Inn was known as Mike's Place, a bar that opened up in 1945 by a man everyone knew as Whiskey Mike, a former moonshiner during the Prohibition and one-time track inspector for the Oregon Short Line. Whiskey Mike had a good rapport with the railroad men and it was said he always had a drink ready for crews of passing trains. In return, bags of coal would accidentally fall off of certain trains as they lumbered past the siding of Pebble. Today it is fairly quiet around Mike's place, and trains only stop occasionally to make meets at the 7,339-foot siding. And if you're looking for solitude in between trains, you can find it here. We waited near Pebble for two westbounds that were heading our direction, hoping to take advantage of some nice evening light. Being January, the sun retires early, and it slipped behind the mountains as UP-5653 finally entered the frame.
The thermometer dipped below zero Fahrenheit by the time the second westbound, UP-3941, came into view in between Bancroft and Pebble. The railroad stretches across the expanse of Gem Valley, so named for gemstones, mostly obsidian, which can be found along the valley floor. An eastbound rebels toward Bancroft led by UP-5701, a recently repainted GE AC-4400 CWCTE built in March of 2001. A third remote-controlled engine is tucked into the middle of this string of empty grain hoppers. UP-7861 leads a long westbound stack train through Talmadge, just a few miles east of Bancroft.
This train is running in a 3x4 configuration. In addition to the three engines on the point, four more remote-controlled DPUs are cut in mid-train. The railroad continues to follow the route of the Oregon Trail past the town of Soda Springs, named for numerous hot springs of carbonated water. Looking quite the opposite of hot is the small dead line of older GEs. UP-9240 is a representative of the C-40-8 model, built between 1987 and 1992, while others have the designation of C-40-8W because of their wide cab design. Adding to the variety is the UP-9732, which is a C-44-9W, built in August of 1994. Union Pacific prefers the AC traction version of these engines, and you'll see plenty of them powering trains from the older AC-4400 CWs to today's Tier 4 ET-44AH diesels. A couple of other examples of AC traction are powering this train. Two ES-44 ACs number 8046 and 7657, along with GE's competitor EMD's model SD-70 ACE number 8525. Moving 30 miles to the east, we find ourselves at Montpelier, more specifically at control point CPG-115, situated in southeast Idaho's Bear Lake Valley. This was once known as Clover Creek by travelers of the Oregon Trail. Settled in 1864, it was later renamed after the capital of Vermont by Mormon church leader Brigham Young. The Oregon Short Line Railway arrived here from Granger, Wyoming on August 5, 1882, and the population grew, making Montpelier the largest city in the Bear Lake Valley. A depot still stands just west of our location, and we will show it to you after an eastbound light power move races through town on the 70 mile per hour track. Montpelier was a crew change point on the Oregon Short Line between Pocatello and Green River until the early 1970s. Some of the largest railroad shops in the state were also located here, along with a 20-stall roundhouse, turntable, and facilities for fueling and watering steam locomotives. Today, local switching is still performed and the old depot is used by maintenance of way crews. A pair of EMD SD-70Ms head out to do some switch work on this cold winter afternoon.
The engines disappear under the Highway 89 overpass. Traffic on the OSL can be sporadic with long periods of quiet in between trains. We caught word that a pair of westbounds were heading our way, so we stayed trackside even though the winter light was beginning to fade. The signals at control point CPG 115 are hot for UP 5486, which is in charge of a mixed manifest making an evening run for Pocatello. As darkness falls over the city of 2500, a big M proudly glows in the snowy hillside to the east of town. Other lights can be seen on this winter evening, shining down from the signal bridge at control point CPG 117, which is the west end of Montpelier. The high green means our second westbound, UP 8907, is almost here. As the westbound's Fred, or flashing rear-end device, disappears into the night, 
Another day of rail fanning draws to a close. Continuing east, double track ends at Dingle, and the railroad continues as a single track mainline with sidings for the rest of the journey to Granger. The meandering Bear River leads the railroad toward the Wyoming border as we follow an eastbound manifest for the rest of the trip to Granger. UP 5701 is seen again as it passes a 7,389 foot siding of horror. We are now in the state of Wyoming, as the 5701 leads its eastbound train up a 1% grade at Fossil.
The train will reach the summit of the grade near Moyer Junction and drop down the east side through Kemmerer and on to Granger. Granger is milepost 846.8 .8 on UP's Pocatello subdivision timetable. This is the junction with the Evanston sub running between Ogden, Utah and Green River, Wyoming. We are just in time to catch a westbound grain train led by UP 7401 as it enters the Pocatello subdivision with a fresh crew out of Green River. A lone remote-controlled SD-70As adds its muscle to the rear of the train. The grain train will meet the UP-5701 at Nutria, around 15 miles to the west of here. UP-5569 has a westbound stack train routed for Ogden on the Evanston sub. The Evanston subdivision is part of the original Transcontinental Railroad, completed in 1869, known originally as the Pacific Railroad. The ceremonial driving of the Golden Spike happened at Promontory Summit, Utah, on May 10, 1869, where the Central Pacific, building east from Sacramento, California, met the Union Pacific, building west from Omaha, Nebraska. Over 150 years later, these rails are still polished by steel wheels. Moving just east of the signal bridge, we are in time for one final look at the UP-5701 as the train enters the Evanston subdivision for the final 30 miles to the crew change point at Green River. But that's a story for another time. In the meantime, we hope you've enjoyed this wintertime visit to an often overlooked portion of Union Pacific's Oregon Short Line route through Idaho and Wyoming. If you like content like this, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe for more programs like this added weekly. As always, until next time, thanks for watching.